Hello again, everybody. It's good to be with you. It's Pastor Kevin bringing you today's daily devotion. Um, it is a getting, starting to get, well, it's not overcast, but you can tell a little storm is coming and there'll probably be some rain this weekend, um, which is good. We could use it uh, to post challenges for outdoor services, but <laughs> we'll work it out. Um, yesterday, I talked to you about Daniel praying from his, his room with his windows open and um, basically ready to take the consequences for it because in reality the consequences that he knew were most important was the fact that he would get on his knees and pray uh, with thanksgiving to his king and even in the middle of of uh, chaos and his own life being in danger um, I want to talk to you about a second prayer moment in Daniel's life and it's from chapter 9 uh, and in this point the the chapter begins with this um, uh, it's Daniel declaring kind of, usually you know that there's a section because it will talk about who's in charge and kind of the timing it is and so forth. So in this case, he's talking about there's a Mead that's a king at this point. And Daniel was, it's like he's sitting there doing calculations and he's looking at Jeremiah's prophecy and saying, well, how long are we going to be um, in exile? Right. Remember, this is Daniel who's in exile. He's using all of his gifts and his capabilities to, um, to the benefit. I mean, to be honest, in 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 all cases, he's kind of second in charge to whoever the leader is. They they bring him on, recognize his wisdom, and he he becomes a help using those gifts. But he will not turn his back on his Lord. So in this case. Daniel does this calculation and he prays. And and I want you to hear the content of this prayer. This is uh, chapter 9, starting in verse 3. It says this, Then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments we have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled turning aside from your commandments and rules we have not listened to your servants the prophets who spoke in your name to our kings our princes and our fathers and to all the people of the land to you O lord belongs righteousness but to us open shame as it is this day to the men of judah to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all Israel, those who are near and those who are far away, in all the lands to which you have driven them because of the treachery that they have committed against you. To us, the Lord, belongs open shame, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by walking in his laws which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. It's a little bit of a different tone in this this prayer. You can see that Daniel is feeling the corporate weight of his nation, of the people of God, of God's elect, his chosen Israel. Um, And he's, much like those that went before him, uh, including Moses, He's praying on behalf of the people, and he's including himself among the sinners. He's including himself, saying, no, we have failed miserably. Open shame is ours. Um, And I know this is a more stark message, but I think this is another one of those times when um, I think we really need to ask ourselves as we go through life, week by week, day by day, month by month, um... Are we choosing the right path? Are we doing things that we know our king loves and appreciates and and honors? Are we glorifying him with our actions, with our thoughts? It's a tough one. Because sometimes the prayer that's required is getting on our knees and confessing. And and much like in the, uh, you know, there's that parable from Jesus about Pharisee and Uh, coming and saying, I'm glad I'm not like this guy. And this guy is beating his breast saying, woe to me, a sinner. Sometimes we need to do that. There's a necessity of confessing the things where we're going wrong, the things where we're missing the mark. Um, I need to do this as well. 
I, I think there are times when I get lazy, slothful. Um, there are seasons where it becomes hard uh, to, because of all of the things that are required of his normal life, being a dad, being a pastor, being a husband, um, that I may take one of those too far and the other things start to drop by the wayside. And for that, I want to make sure that I'm coming back to God and asking for forgiveness and asking for his help to change my direction. I pray that you would do that with me today. Maybe today's a good day to ask yourself, is, is your attitude, is your thinking, is your mind going in the right directions? Are they godly directions? Or are you putting some other desire, want, right, whatever you want to call it, um, ahead of his kingdom? More important than maybe the people around you or, or something like that. God asks us to love him and love the people around us. Measure how you're doing in that and um, seek him, just as Daniel does. Daniel, on, on a corporate level, he's praying not necessarily just for something he's done, but the, the, that his people, the people he is aligned with, the people that he calls family, are actually sinning against the Lord. So, it's powerful, something we should be considering. So I pray you do that with me today. Heavenly Father, we, we come before you... Um, wanting to wanting to know that we can come to you all the time even in those moments i mean sometimes i think we cower like a young child before a father or mother who when we know we've done something wrong and we avoid going to them we avoid the just the, the out of fear of consequence or fear of 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 having dishonored or making making our parent upset we do the same with you, Lord, and I, I pray that you would break through, that your spirit would remind us, no, 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 you can come all the time, that we have the ability to approach this throne of grace and truth um, whenever we can, whenever we want. We, we're able to come into the divine throne room to seek you, your mercy, your forgiveness, your counsel, your wonder, your glory, your honor, all of those things. Um, so help us to do that on this day. Help us to seek out your face in the middle of our own sin, in the middle of our own corporate sin, in the middle of all the ways that we have actually maybe taken things in the wrong direction, or maybe um, our hearts are going in the wrong direction, and it's hard, and we need your help to lead us back. Help us on this day. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a beautiful day, and don't forget to always come before your King.